So welcome also from my side to this webinar where we will have a panel discussion what it's like to study a bachelor's degree in the School of Business. So my name is Olivia and I will be the interviewer today and with me I have three panelists that will introduce themselves in a moment. So as Julia also said you can send questions uh, in the chat and we will answer them in the end of the webinar. And I would also like to remind you that please don't ask uh, questions about applying. Those will be answered in a webinar on Thursday that also admission services will host. Um, and you can also send them an email at to admissions at alto.fi. But yes, let's go through our panelists. So could you please introduce yourself in the same order as the pictures? Yes, so hello everyone from my side as well. Um, my name is Helemi and um, I'm currently a master's student um, in the School of Business, but um, I completed my bachelor's studies in international business and this actually isn't located on the Otaniemi campus where the actual School of Business is, um, but the bachelor's degree in international business um, is located in Mikkeli, which is a city about two and a half hours away from Otaniemi. Um, it's just one small campus and that's the only degree you can complete there, but it is a part of Aalto and part of the Aalto School of Business. So um, yeah, I spent two years there doing my bachelor's degree. Um, and yeah, now I am had started my master's in the fall in Otaniemi. So yeah thank you um hi my name is Laviva and I'm a third year bachelor's student at the school of business um I did my two years of my major studies in economics and now I've moved on to my minor in marketing and just trying to get the rest of my courses done so I can actually graduate um, and then I'll be writing my thesis uh, this spring. Um, and also before the actual seminar begins, I'd like to apologize. This happened last year as well. Uh, I very much have a cough right now. So if you see me coughing like an idiot on the side of your screen, just ignore it. Um, I'm fine. But uh, yeah, happy to be here. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Oh, is my internet okay? Oh, no. I think Sorry it's okay now. Um, well, anyway, I hope you can hear me. Um, my name is Mona. I'm also um, studying in the School of Business. I have my major in economics and I'm also a third year student. So right now I'm doing my minor and in the spring, I'm gonna be doing my bachelor's thesis. And um, fun fact about me, I started school after three years of Oh, three years of working, so I'm 25 now, so I'm a little bit older, so I have, I hope that will bring a new person. Yes, thank you. So now first topic we will be discussing is studies. So also is home to unique study paths that we will be hearing about now. So why did you choose Alto University? Uh, Labiba, would you like to start? Yeah, I can start. Um, my story is not that exciting um, because myself or like my study journey was not that exciting either in the sense that I very much did not know what I wanted to do in high school. And then my counselor just kind of Googled some degrees and was like, hey, there's this new economics degree at Alto. I was like, okay that sounds pretty cool sounds pretty cutting edge um so I applied and I got in and yeah very randomized but I will say that it's been great so that's what matters but I'm sure my co-panelists have something more exciting to say yeah thank you uh so tell me how was it for you um unfortunately not any more interesting but um I think it's pretty a common theme that I see, especially with uh, business school applicants, they kind of have the similar story as Labiba did that kind of in high school, you don't really have 
a very clear idea of what you want to do. And that's how I was. And um, I think when I started looking around, um, I think the all the business school, I think it offered a good enough variety that you didn't have to know exactly what you wanted to study. Um, so you can kind of spend the first couple years like feeling everything out and kind of seeing what courses interest you the most. And then maybe that will inspire you then to, you know, focus on something more specific. Um, but I, I actually applied for the economics um, bachelor as well. That was my first choice, but I did not get in. So um, Mikkeli was my second choice. Um, and I'm very happy that it worked out that way. Um, so uh, Mikkeli was definitely, I think, the better fit for me in terms of the courses. I think there was um, just a lot more variety. And then uh, it was just, it was a great, um, it was then what I expected, but it was a great outcome. So I'm very happy that I ended up where I ended up. So, but yeah, that's not very interesting good. either. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good to hear that you were happy with your choice. Yes. Yeah. So was it the same for you, Mona? I think her internet or might cut she... out as she has Oh, yeah, it seems so. Oh, I think she will rejoin us soon, so you can. Yeah, I think so. It. Yeah, we can continue. So then, uh, what do you think is the best part about studying at Alta University? And I see some very nice pictures. So if you could also explain a bit what's happening in the picture, it would be nice. Um, so help me, would you like to continue? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I th definitely think the best part about studying at Aldo is the community and the people that you meet. Um, I've met all of my closest friends in Aldo. So, um, but yeah, the picture I put is on the bottom. Um, I'm there in the middle in the black jacket. But um, this is a student event in Mikkeli. It's called Ribbon Skate and it's um, hosted for charity um, by the student board. Uh, basically, we just spend the day skating around um, in this little field in the center of Mikkeli in our overalls and just we drink hot chocolate and, you know, we have different games and stuff. So um, it's very fun, even though I'm not a good skater at all but <laughs> it was very fun. And here we had a team race that me and my friend Alexi won. That's why our hands are in the air, we're celebrating. Um, but yeah, it's moments like these that just really make the whole Aldo experience worth it. And um, yeah. Sounds really amazing. Yes. So what do you think is the best part, La Viva? Uh, I'm going to go for the cliche generic answer of definitely the people that you meet. Um, I'm sorry to get sappy like that. But it's the truth. Um, and in the picture, you can see us at an event. It had, it had a really odd name. It was something like after, after, after party of something. I, I don't know. A lot of afters in there. And yeah, I went with my really close group of friends. You can see our overalls. They're quite bare because this was like how I don't know like we had the year of pandemic and then things started happening again so it was right after that um but yeah so definitely the people that you meet and the the bonds that you form um are the best part of studying at all though yeah I would agree with both of you that's what I also think is the best part um then the next question is what made you want to study your field and maybe we already went through this a bit in the first question, but if there is something you would like to add. So yeah, Labiba, do you have anything? Uh, actually, it, I'm kind of uh, the odd one out in my degree in the sense that I didn't have any background in economics before I started, which was a whole other struggle on its own. But anyways, point being is that the, <clears throat> the path that I took to get into econ economics was very much through uh, I don't know how many people here know of something called the European Youth Parliament, but it's sort of like a simulation of the European Parliament and you get to debate 
issues regarding the parliament and I was put into a committee regarding economic issues and trade issues and like I had never had any kind of exposure to that kind of material before and it was extremely intriguing so <clears throat> I thought I'd take the leap and you know delve into the actual theory of it and that's how I ended up here so yeah wow but that's still interesting I think thank you <laughs> yeah so what about you Helmi um yeah I think nothing more special to add but um I did actually have some I went to an IB high school so I had some economics uh or economics was one of the subjects that I chose and I had quite a few different um courses on that so I think that piqued my initial interest as it was something I noticed that I maybe excelled at uh more than the other subjects um so I guess that kind of led me towards the business side um as well as I've had the influence from um, my both my parents went to business school and uh, my brother also went to uh, Mikkeli, the school I went to. Um, so I think that also kind of, with my parents especially, I kind of saw the career path it led them to and I thought that was very exciting and something I would want to do. And then also I've heard, heard good things um, about Aldo through like my friends and my brother. Um, so I think that definitely a lot of out, outside inspiration. I think that's what led me to this field. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. And I see now that Mona is back on the line. Uh, does your internet work, Mona? Uh, yeah, it's a bit dodgy. Um, okay. Can you hear me? I can, I can still answer questions, but I'm going to yeah. my camera off so that it doesn't take too much internet from me. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah. So what yeah. was what was your experience? What made you study economics? Well, I had also heard a lot of good things about um, the major in economics from a friend of mine, but he is um, very ultra capitalist and I didn't see myself as being um, that capitalist as him. And I think that there's loads of problems in the world that are caused by the current state of events and like the current system. So I was curious to see um, how everything actually works and if there's um, if there's ways to use economics to help, you know, the current the current climate crisis or refugee crisis or poverty or like big problems like that that can't be changed just by one organization, but like just a bigger change in systems so that's what I was curious about and now I'm just kind of hooked I'm very interested even though there's many things that I disagree on I just think it's very valuable the whole degree and understanding what makes the world tick you know yeah that's good to hear yeah um then our next question is what are your studies like so Maybe you could say something about like what kind of courses there are and also what the courses are built up by. Is it mostly seminars, exercises, group works, or how does it work? So Helmi, uh, how was it in Mikkeli? Yeah, I think uh, in Mikkeli it's very different than it is in Otaniemi. Um, so basically the degree in international business it's I think it's a very good start to the business field because it gives you a chance to get a very general overview of what are the different like sub areas of business and kind of you know we have courses from you know marketing and finance and just you kind of get a feel of everything which I think is great for someone who doesn't exactly have an idea of what they want to do. Um, so it definitely gives you some time to then figure out. Then once I shifted to my master's, then I had a more maybe clear idea of what I wanted to focus on. Um, but yeah, the structure, the course structure is also very different that you would get in uh, Aalto in Otaniemi. So we have one course at a time and we have three week modules so you do one course for three weeks and then that's done you're done with that you move on to the next course do that for three weeks um and that continues for pretty much 
uh, two years straight. So even in the summer, we have school, which I know sounds kind of stupid and not fun at all, but it's language courses, which I think were very fun. So you got to pick um, there's Spanish, French, and German, I believe. Um, so you got to pick a language course and depending on your level, you could take a beginner's course or then a more advanced course. And that's what you do for the whole of your first summer um, of your degree. And I think because the courses are not super, not, not that much business oriented. It's kind of you're back in high school learning a language. So I think it was very fun and it was, you know, it doesn't take up too much of your day. Um, we have set uh, three hour slots every day for those lectures. And then after that, you're done. Um, so there is then a lot of time afterwards to do whatever you want. Um, but yeah, I think the structure in the economics uh, bachelor is very different. So definitely interesting. And then here how it compares. Yeah, it's interesting to hear. I actually didn't know that myself about the structure. Yeah. Yeah. How is it? How does it look in Otaniemi, uh, Labiba or Mona? Could you tell us more? Mona, do you want to go? Yeah, I can go ahead. Um, me and Labiba are actually um, in the same class. We started off, um, yeah, we started off <laughs> together. So it's like the answer is going to be about the same. But considering the structure, there's two periods of study in the, in the fall and then three periods in the springtime. And usually you take about one or one to three courses during one period. And that means that you're gonna have lectures on maybe three or four days per week. And then then you're free to do all the all the exercises that you need. I don't remember there being a lot of group exercises. I mean, working in a group is encouraged. It's definitely something that the professors want us to do, but also to like learn the subject subjects individually. But I don't remember there being some courses where we were, we made some presentations in groups, but mostly it's working by yourself or with friends to do your individual work. Hmm. Okay. So would you say that your studies are flexible? Like, can you choose if you want to attend the lectures or is it mandatory? Um. Um, it depends on the professor. Usually attendance is not taken. And since we started during the pandemic, everything was online. So, so each lesson was recorded so you could watch them later on, but that's not the case now at every course. So if a professor has decided to continue that, you might have the recordings afterwards, but usually if you can't make it to the lecture, everything is posted online on my courses, which is the platform that usually the course materials are posted on at Alta. And you can find all the slides and the and the literature there. So it is definitely flexible. I have been mm -hmm. able to work during my study time. So um, so I do feel like it is flexible. Yeah, that's really convenient. Uh, is it the same in Mikkeli, Helmi? Uh, not really. <laughs> or <laughs> um, I think Mikkeli is, or the international business degree, it's very intensive. Um, because we have those three week modules and that's the time you have set to complete that one course. So they want you to be present for those three weeks. That's why we have um, mandatory attendance and they do keep track of who's there and who's not. And you can get um, kicked off a course if you're absent too many times. Um, but I think with COVID, I think, because most of my bachelor degree was, um, taken over by the pandemic so I was only in school in person um well I started in the fall of 2019 so then in the start of 2020 that's when COVID hit so then after that we just moved straight online um so in that sense the studies became a little more flexible because it was we were just online and I feel like that's when the teachers or the professors didn't really care that much if people showed up or not because or you could just open your laptop and, you know, be there, but not be there. Um, 
but I think now it's gone pretty much back to normal, but I would definitely keep that in mind when um, you're choosing where to apply that it is a little more, or it's not as flexible as it is in Otaniemi um, because you do have kind of a set time to complete your degree and they, it is a very intensive program. So um, yeah, definitely do keep that in mind, but it's, I think for me, having kind of that requirement to show up is great because if not, then I probably wouldn't. So I think it definitely keeps you motivated. Um, and yeah, I think it enables you to get your work done the most in the most efficient way. So yeah. I, for me, it, that structure was a good fit, but it is very different than most uh, Finnish universities. Yeah, I think that's true. And good advice also to consider when applying. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Uh, then would you say that there are multidisciplinary opportunities in your or options in your studies? Um, Mona, what do you say? Like, is it? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I feel like the basic studies are kind of um, rigid that you have to do in the economics degree. But afterwards, there are there's a quota for business studies outside of economics that you kind of have to take. And also, I think there's about 15 credits that you can take whatever you want, which is nice. I took a lot of arts courses that have been very nice and high quality in Aldo University, which is one of the, one of the reasons that I chose Aldo University is because they have so many different disciplines in the school that you can kind of freely choose um what sort of shenanigans you want to get into next period so especially in the Otanimi campus you see a lot of different students and you can like talk to them and find out what courses they're taking and what is what is fun and what is not so um I feel like outside of the basic structure you have a lot of freedom it's not that you can like choose whatever you want into your major but but I do feel like I had a lot of choice in the in the extra courses which was very fun yeah that sounds good so uh labiba and tell me do you have anything to add or um well i can then compare again to how it is in mikkeli so um since in mikkeli we only have that one um that one degree you can do, which is bachelor's in international business. There's no other schools as there is in Otaniemi. Um, so there's really no other courses you could take from, you know, arts or, you know, the more technical side of Aldo, because uh, we just don't have that opportunity. Um, so I think in Mikkeli, it is a lot more just focused on the business courses and um, the core studies are a big part of your degree. So there's a lot of mandatory courses you have to do. Of course, there's then like electives and like the languages that I mentioned earlier that you get freedom in choosing kind of then what you're more interested in, but those are also um, business oriented. So I think um, in Otanemi, I think there's now I've noticed once I've started my master's, there's definitely more freedom that you can kind of dabble in different uh, fields as well so which I think is great but um, I think uh, in Mikkeli again keep in mind that it's it's just that one campus it's just that one degree so uh, there's not as many options as you might have in Otaniemi so mm. yeah. yeah that's also good to keep in mind yeah uh, then what's your course load like and could you also say something like how the study year at Alto look like. We heard from Mikkeli how it looks like, but how is it in in Otaniemi? Uh, Mona, would you like to explain a bit? Uh, yeah, I think uh, <laughs> the first period that we ever had, like the beginning of the degree was very intense. Um, a friend of mine who, who recommended this program to me kind of warned me that there have been a lot of work the first year, which I knew to look out for, but yeah, it definitely did live up to its name. There was a lot of work, especially me taking three years to work. Um, I had taken a bit of distance from school. So going back to all the math and programming and then economics, it was kind of, it was kind of intense and it has been intense after that, but I feel like 
during that time of intensity, you understand who your friends are at the school and then you learn how to work hard. Um, it's definitely for people who like to challenge themselves. So you did notice that some people who went in there who were just like, you know, it's a good degree and I can do whatever I want and I don't have to work. Um, they were a bit shocked that they actually have to work. So um, I'm not saying that it's intense and impossible, but it definitely challenges you. Let's let's say that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I do you agree, Labiba? Um, yeah, I definitely agree. <laughs> um, Mona's seen the worst of it. She's she's seen me cry, she's seen me scream, you know, all of that stuff, because uh, we suffered through the, the first year together. Um, but <clears throat> about the first year, actually, it's quite important to point out that it is an integral part of your studies as an economics student, because um, before you move on to your second year, where you approach more in-depth economic theories, which require, you know, background knowledge, in the first year, sort of every student is sat down and their level of knowledge is brought up to like the same level, essentially. So you have to take all of these basic courses in mathematics and programming to ensure that everyone has like a like a level playing field, essentially, before you move on to your second year and really get into the nitty gritty details. So like I mentioned before, I didn't have a background in economics. So the first year was very painful, but very much needed, I would say, um, because then that meant that my second year was a lot less stressful, I guess. But yeah. OK, yeah. Interesting to hear. Uh, then Helmi, uh, could you tell us how your typical day look like when you're? Um, yeah, I really have to think back because it's been so long since I went to school in Mikkeli. But um, like I mentioned, we have the three hour slot for lectures um, on campus. Um, that's still the case today. So um, usually those would either be from nine to twelve or um, then from 12 to three, it kind of depended because um, once you start your degree, uh, all the new students are divided into two classes. So, and then there's gonna be two courses going on um, at the same time. So one class is gonna take one course, the other class is gonna take the other course. And one of those classes is gonna be in the morning and the other one in the afternoon. So it kind of depends what course you have and what group you're in. It depends if you have your lectures in the morning or then in the afternoon. Um, but generally, um, the structure, I think, is pretty much very similar to most university students. So in the morning, you wake up and then you go to school um, at some point uh, for lectures. And then I would always have lunch on campus. Um, Back then it was even more affordable than it is now, which it still is, but, um, and the Finnish study I think is, is very good. So I think it's definitely worth it. And I'm not a very active cook myself. So it was definitely something that I enjoyed. And then after lectures and all the formal stuff, um, you basically had the rest of the day to do whatever. And then most of the time, at least a few hours, not every day, but um, most days there would be some group work. Mikkeli, uh, all the courses were very oriented towards group work. So we had a lot of those assignments. Um, so we would just spend time on campus. There was a lot of different spaces you could work in as a group. Um, and the campus was open till very late. So you could you know, stay there for as long as you like. And yeah, then the evenings kind of also varied on the day, but usually those would, for me at least, try to get some kind of exercise in, go on a run or something. And we also, uh, a lot of the student clubs organize different um, exercise opportunities. So we, for example, had floorball and football and in the winter ice skating. So there was stuff you could do with your friends as well and just hang out with them in general. And then the evenings would kind of be, if there wasn't any specific student events or anything, they would be kind of just used to wind down and just make sure all the assignments got done and prepare for the next day and stuff. And then, yeah, just go to bed and do it all, all over again. 
the next day. So <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty much how much my day to day looked like. But yeah. Yeah, it's interesting to hear. Yeah, our next theme will now be the campus in Otaniemi. And as you can see on the picture, it's surrounded by nature, but it's only a 10 minute metro ride to the Helsinki city center. And we also have a metro station in one of the main buildings in Alt, so it's really convenient. Um, but now, what is the campus like? Maybe if Labiba and Mona, you could tell a bit about the Otaniemi campus and tell me if you could say some words about Mikkeli. So like, yeah, about the schools and the facilities and what kind of services like restaurants and shops there are. So uh, Mona, would you like to start? Yeah, um, it's actually just uh, last year and this year that we've had a better opportunity to be on campus. So um, yeah, I think the main classrooms that I attend classes in are very close to the metro station. So the business school is kind of close to the other entrance to the metro station. So it's a very close walk by and um, the new business building is very cool, very fancy, very modern. I really like it. Um, and there's loads of places to do independent study in. There's like, there's the business hub and there's an app to reserve classrooms in, which is very useful called Aldo Space that me and Lubido use all the time when we go study together. And um, I don't know, I don't know what to, actually how to describe the classrooms. There's like basic classrooms that you had in high school, but then there's also like these, um, what is it called? Like like a big lecture hall that I usually attend classes in too. And um, I don't know, what, what is it for like, uh, for Labibo, what do you have to add? Um, well, the last time I had this kind of meeting with like, people from abroad checking in. Uh, I was describing the campus structure and how it's like extremely centralized and everything is within like a short radius of, you know, whatever the campus is. Um, and this American student was like, that sounds like a very American campus because they have the same sort of structure of like everything being in one place, which is actually quite um, like not very common in Helsinki, at least most of the other universities here have different campuses in different parts of the, the city. So I quite like um, Alto's whole centralized aspect. I think it's great that you have access to everything in, you know, the second year on campus, everything is like by foot, like furthest, maybe 15 minutes away, which I think is great. Um, what else you have access to all the different departments, uh, so, for example, right now, I am a business student undercover in the computer science building because I was freaking out. I couldn't find any other room to actually hold this meeting in. Um, so I'm here. Everyone thinks I study CS, but I don't. It's fine. They don't need to know that. Um, what else? I would point out probably the student restaurants. We have a lot of them. I am not able to give a number. I will say over 10. So there's definitely something for every palette out there and you get the, the warm meal that Helmi was talking about for 270 with your student card. Um, my favorite is, uh, my favorite restaurant is Dipoli, I would say, which is this beautiful building. Like I swear to God, the first time I saw it, I felt like it was like a movie set. It's absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. The wood is beautiful and the restaurant has great food. Uh, what else? Like on the outskirts of the campus, you have like this block of accommodation. Um, it's scattered around, but the main one is like sort of, I don't, well, if you don't know the name of it, then I shouldn't mention it. But yeah, there's like a bunch of uh, different types of apartments or like housing, like studios and shared flats. Um, and then there's like a beach right next to that. So yeah, I think that's everything, I hope. Yeah, I think that's a really good explanation. And yeah, we will also be talking about the housing a bit more later. So, yeah. And how is Mikkeli, Helmi, if you could shortly um, say something about the campus there? Yeah, it will definitely be short because there is not much to say, but um, I think, uh, well, we also have 
everything is closed because we have one building that makes up our campus. Um, so yeah, it's that building you see on the top picture. It is very, um, it's cute. That's how I would describe it. Um, it's in the center of Mikkeli. I say center because the center of Mikkeli is very small and that's basically all Mikkeli is. Um, so I definitely think it was a bit of a shock to me as well, um, even though I'm not from um, like the center of Helsinki or anything. Um, I'm from a smaller town as well, but uh, it was very, I guess, shocking first because I have seen the Otaniemi campus before that. Um, so I was kind of surprised to see uh, how quaint it is, but I guess it does make sense because I, like I said, it's just that one degree. So we don't really need a lot of space anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we have that building. We have one student restaurant on campus on the bottom floor. And then we have one bigger lecture hall that you usually have your very first course in because that's when all the students are combined. They all have the same course. So, and then there's two other floors to that building that have smaller classrooms, kind of like similar to what you would have in high school. Um, so just chairs and tables. And um, yeah, but Mikkel is also very nature filled. So there's, it's, it's a very beautiful city in the summer, I would say, <laughs> which you can yeah. say most Finnish cities. But um, even though it's small, I think it's very nice. That was one of my favorite things about it, that it was just so small, because all your friends are going to live right next to you. And everything you need is going to be max 10 minute walk. So um, even though we don't have all the fancy spaces that Otaniemi has, I think um, what we have in Mikkel is more than enough. And uh, there's definitely enough room for everyone and um, plenty of space to kind of, you know, do group work and stuff and get your studies done. So yeah, I, that's myself, really good to hear. Yeah. 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 And you already talked a bit about what your favorite things were, but uh, Mona, you didn't uh, really mention any favorite thing about campus in the previous question. So would you like to share what your favorite thing is? And also if you like to say something about the pictures. Oh, um, <laughs> well, my favorite thing about the campus is how close it is to my home, even though I live in like Helsinki. I really love that it's easy to go to and it's very accessible. I feel like it's very welcoming and there's a lot of space. That's what I actually love about it the most that you don't feel too crowded ever. And there's usually there's usually a room to study in with your friends so that you can have that privacy to actually focus on your studies. And um, also <laughs> that I can go and eat with my friends that I love a lot. Um, you can see us in my Be Real right there. And that's the picture with me and Libiba and Johan, my friends. And um, I think that it's really pretty, even though it might not be for everyone. I feel like all of the, like the red brick is a really nice vibe. I feel like it's really cute. And um, I do love the choice in cafeterias. It's actually, I, I love the discussion before we go out to lunch, you know? Should we go for spaghetti or um, this is this is nothing to do with my stuff, but like the campus and the the food is definitely like a big plus. I feel like it makes the whole studying experience a lot more enjoyable than it could be. Also, the new business building is really cool. I really like it. Yeah, it is. It is. So, uh, Labiva and Helmi, do you have any favorite thing you would like to add? Or should we move up? I at least don't have anything to add, but I will say about the new business school in Otaniemi, it's it's incredible. Um, the architecture is great. So uh, we were definitely kind of shocked all because a lot of people from Mikkeli come to Otaniemi to do their masters because um, we have an automatic study right to come there. Um, so we were all shocked. I remember the first day we got on campus, we were like, why is there so many people here? Because <laughs> we just weren't used to that. Um, 
but yeah, I think the spaces are definitely, and the architecture is one of my favorite things about being in Otaniemi now, so. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Labi, but you want to add something? Um, uh, in terms of like actual locations, I would say one thing that wasn't mentioned that I quite like um, on the Otaniemi campus is uh, the startup sauna, which is quite like, it's a bit of a walk, but you get there, I think like in under 10 minutes for the metro station. And it's basically like a hub for all of the entrepreneurship related uh, clubs and organizations that are here in Aldo, which are quite huge and quite successful. And we can go into that later, but they have a really sick location where you can also just study or talk to the really cool people there that are working on their projects and events. And yeah, they always have free soda for some reason, which I appreciate. So, yeah. Wow, oh, amazing. Thank you. Also, um, I'd like to add that on the campus, very close to like the, the living facilities or like the, the student accommodation, there's like this huge field for like running track and doing sports. And also there's like a, there's like a unisport, a cheaper gym to like normal gyms that's, that's on campus. It's a little bit of a walk away, but it's still there, but it's like, it's very big. It's like multiple stories and, and there's like, I think there's some like group exercise things going on. I've never went there. I usually don't go to the gym, but I just know that it's there. So I feel like people who, who might want to live on campus could really like that addition to their daily life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the gym is a good, a good thing to mention on campus. So then we will move on to housing and student benefits. So there are lots of student benefits that you are entitled to in Finland. So if we could just shortly like uh, explain a bit what kind of housing opportunities there are for students in Otaniemi. So uh, Labiba, could you explain a bit? Yeah, um, I'm not too versed on this subject, but um, there are the studios that uh, you have to queue up quite a long time for because they're quite in demand, as I'm sure you know. Um, and then I would say the rest of the flats are sort of like these, either these kinds of like shared um, apartments where you like share a, like a common kitchen, um, I believe. And then you have like your own sort of like room that has a door and then that's that you just kind of have that common space yeah. um yeah that's I think about it honestly I'm I'm not to Mona can you help me out what are the other options? yeah because <laughs> I am not or hail me probably also yeah go um, ahead uh, I, I don't know a lot. I've always, um, I've, I've lived in Helsinki with, with either my friends or, or in, a, in an apartment that I got just from the, uh, from the free market. So I don't know a lot of like um, housing options. I, I know that those are like the, the big, big three that you usually go for and you have to queue up for some time. So um, yeah, I had nothing to add. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Yeah, and I guess in Mikkeli, it's this uh, moas.fi that is the main one. Yeah, um, yeah. what I've understood about, I can tell a little bit about the situation and how it is in Otaniemi, but um, yeah, there's AYY, which is um, kind of an Aalto, uh, what is funded or started uh, organization to kind of give students housing. So they have their own spaces. And then HOAS is just um, like a general one for the city of Helsinki. Um, so there's, those are the kind of the two options you can study or uh, apply for apartments in when you're coming to study in Otaniemi. And they are spread out that there are some in Otaniemi. Um, and then there's also a lot of in the Helsinki region. So you definitely have a lot of options um, kind of depending where you wanna live. Um, but I would do keep in mind, I've had some, I've met some exchange students now in Otaniemi and I've asked where they live and they're kind of like, oh, I haven't moved to the, my apartment yet, but this is where it is. 
and I kind of I look at them and I'm like okay and I look on the map and it's it's very very far away on campus so I, the kind of the area they were spread out in is very large so I would definitely look on a map when you're <laughs> Um, applying for your housing if you want to be close to campus those um, can be a little bit more difficult to get um, yeah. so just do keep in mind that there might be some you might have to travel a bit further away um, but yeah, yeah I personal experience I don't really have a lot of I've always lived in kind of private housing so I haven't used to student apartments even in Mikkeli I um, I stayed in student housing the first few months that I was there, um, but then I wanted to get closer to school, so I switched to private housing, which is not very much more expensive it, in Mikkeli. Um, the rent prices are a lot lower, but private housing in Helsinki is obviously a little bit more expensive. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, it's true. Yeah, I guess it all the price depends like where you live and so on and that leads us into the next question uh is it easy to get to the campus so if you could just shortly like say something is it easy to get from where you live to the campus um yeah labiba uh is it easy for you um before I answer that question, yeah. I, I want to quickly add to the previous slide. Yeah, that, of course. Uh, AYY and yeah, just AYY at least from what I know has a sort of a system of um, like prioritizing different kinds of students. So for example, if you live really far or if you're like, uh, exchange students are quite different, which is what Haley mentioned before. But like, for example, an international student, you're sort of like uh, lifted up on the priority list and uh, given, you know, accommodation earlier as opposed to others. Uh, this is obviously not the case for studios where you have to queue up for a long time. I queued up like, what, two years for mine before I finally got a studio here on campus. Um, but otherwise, the general advice that I've heard for students in terms of accommodation is that whatever accommodation you get, whether it's like shared studio, anything, just take it because once you're actually in the system, it's much easier to like change places within it as opposed to outside of it. So for example, if you get a studio on campus and you don't like it, it's a lot easier to switch to another studio, studio that's vacant as opposed to if you're outside of the AYY system. So that's like the general advice that I've been given and I've taken um, as yeah. a head for anyone who needs it. Yeah, it's really good to mention, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in terms of if it's or is it easy to get to campus, um, I used to live with my parents in eastern Helsinki, which is very, very far from campus. It's a good um, walking one hour away. But because of this amazing blessed metro line that was recently <laughs> constructed, um, it's still an hour, but it's a very sensible, calming hour of just, you know, being in the metro, reading a book, listening to some music. So that's how long it would take for me to get to campus from uh, Eastern Helsinki. So it's easy, but it, it takes a while. I don't know about yeah. the, the others. What do you guys think? Um, yeah, I definitely agree. Or I can now mention being in Otaniemi. Um, I live in Tölä, which is in Helsinki, um, but it's not very close to any metro station. Um, but uh, there is also buses, which are a good option. And I have a bus that goes straight from m literally right outside my apartment to campus. Um, so I think mostly no matter where you live, I think fin Finland is blessed with our public transportation system. Um, so no matter where you live, you're going to get to campus very easily. It might take a little bit more time depending where you are, but um, I think it is super easy, especially now with the metro and everything. And uh, in the summer, it's also great to bike if you live kind of close enough. Um, but yeah, and then in Mikkeli, I'll just briefly mention um, everything was walking distance. So I walked to school in 10 minutes and so did almost all my friends. So there is there is public transport in Mikkeli, but no one really lives that far away that we would have to use it. So either walking or bike was the method of transportation there. Yeah. 
Yeah, Mona, do you have anything to add or can we move on? No, I also live in Dörde and it takes me like 25 minutes. So it's nothing in my opinion. Yeah, yeah it's really convenient to get to the campus, I also think. Um, but yes, then we already mentioned that um, about the housing and the rent and so on. But maybe some of you could say something about the Frank app and what kind of student benefits you can you can get. So, um, yeah, Mona, would you like to explain? Uh yeah i see that we have um hsl there which is the company that provides all of the public transport and you can actually get um the monthly ticket that is usually 65 would i say for just like a normal adult you can get it for half price which is very nice and i, I and i use it a lot so so that's what i'm very thankful for and also um the frank app is where you can download your electronic student card, which you can show at any cafeteria and anywhere where somebody would want to identify you as a student, but also on the app, you have loads of different um, different sales presented, or like if you can get a different percentage from different companies off the final price, like, like Apple or I don't know, some, some bookstores or some banks or, or I don't know, do you know Tier, the, the, the scooter, the electric scooter, you can get discounts off of, I don't know, basically everything, which is really nice. I use it, all. I don't use it that often, but whenever I do want to buy something, I always check the Frank app if there's a discount available. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's really convenient with the app and you can get lots of different uh, sales and so on. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think we have to move on to career opportunities. So we have time to talk about everything. Um, but basically, students can explore different kinds of work opportunities already when you're studying. Um, so, uh, Helmi, is it possible to combine studies with work? And do you work at the moment? Um yes and yes um, i am working at the moment um and i did work during my bachelor studies as well so even though i said it's very intensive in Mikkeli, um it's that three hour slot every day that you have to be in school and the rest of the time you can do whatever and if you want to work then you know you can um i for example for the first I want to say maybe like eight months that I was in Mikkeli. Um, I worked at uh, hockey games in a little cafeteria uh, in the evenings, maybe like two or three times a week, however many games they had that week. Um, so it was just very, you know, easy and, you know, fun and a little bit of extra money. And I had a lot of friends also who maybe worked at, um, some clothing stores that were in town. They did, you know, a few hours every week. I had some friends who worked at the bars that were in town. Um, so yeah, it's definitely possible because you do have a lot of free time. Um, and if you wanna use that to work, then you can. And currently now also, my, I think my uh, studies are taking maybe a little more time in my master's degree. So um, I'm still working here and then I'm working, you know, at the school in the marketing team, um, which was also a possibility in Mikkeli, there was also a marketing team made out of students. So I think that's a great opportunity if you wanna kinda get a little extra money, but you don't wanna get you know, a full-time job or even a part-time, or like, I guess is a part-time job, but you know, where the hours are very flexible and you can do as much as you want. Um, but yeah, it's definitely possible um, if you just make time for it. Yeah, yeah, I agree and I think through the school is a really good way of finding a job also. Yes. Yes. So our following question will be, what kind of career opportunities are there? Um, if you have any that you can share, or if not, we can move on. Um, so we would like to say something. 
Uh, well, I would say at least like the School of Biz has an extremely extensive network of different companies and organizations and people that you can connect with to sort of find whatever career you're looking for. Um, so I mentioned um, sort of like there being a hub for entrepreneurship um, here at Alda. And I wasn't kidding when I said it was it was very good, very successful. Um, so for example, at the top, we have Altos listed, which is Alto entrepreneurship I believe right guys I think so um, and they have all of these different types of events where you can both network or even work in for example um, they hold an event called slush which is one of the uh, how do I say it's like the biggest startup conferences in the world and you bring sort of like these venture capitalists and like the hottest startups on the market together for like two days um, in November here in Helsinki and that's like a whole event maybe you've seen like an article or two or uh seen it in the tv or something but yeah so you're able to like work for that um that's an option or then at the bottom is a uh, job teaser listed which is like all the all those own little what would I describe it as what's the word like like a job searching network, essentially. And you just add all of your qualifications and your degrees and what you're looking for. And then there'll be stuff within the community itself and like companies that are specifically looking for all the students because, well, it is quite a prestigious school and we have very talented students. So um, definitely a lot of like direct opportunities for different kinds of career options. That's yeah. really good uh -huh. advice. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, now let's move on to student life. So Finland is, or Aalto and Finland is quite known for its student life. So now, uh, Mona, could you tell us a bit what Finnish student culture is like? Um, I feel like I'm not the, the best person to talk about it because I haven't okay. been that active, but I, I can tell something about it. Um, I don't know how many international people we have right now in the audience, but it's a very common thing to buy these overalls that you can kind of see on people right now. Um, we all have them, but I regret to inform you that I don't have any patches on mine, which is a disgrace. I'm sorry, you usually when you go to events and you have fun and you do all sorts of different activities you get these little patches that you sew on your um overall um I, I like I don't have that many patches and I haven't put them on my overall so I'm a bit embarrassed but I feel like the Finnish student culture is very active there's I feel like my phone is always blown up of these notifications of different clubs and different activities and different adventures uh, and trips and I don't know anything that you want I think you can find um, on campus or there's cruises and there's trips to the northern part of Finland like Lappi where you go skiing and I don't know all sorts of things I feel like it's very colorful and very active but um, I don't know if somebody else could like specify what sorts of clubs there are or like what are the most popular happenings I don't know, what was it like in, in Mikkeli, for, for example? Um, well, yeah, I, in Mikkeli, we also have a variety of different student clubs. Uh, I think that's, it's very similar to Otanami in that sense, except, you know, obviously the size of the events are going to be much smaller because we don't have as many students. Um, but what we like to do in Mikkeli, especially, we like to go to other cities for um, student events organized by other schools so not necessarily did we go to all the organized events all the time we like to kind of travel around Finland which you can do um, whenever you want whenever there's an event especially in the fall those are very um, common um, so the picture at the top was me and my friends we went to um, uh, Juvaskula, which is another city in Finland which is actually pretty close to um, Mikkeli but uh, yeah, we just like to go to those kind of other cities, travel around, see what kind of student life there is in those cities, because Mikkel is very small, so we were kind of the only school there. So that's why we kind of wanted to expand our horizons. Um, but yeah, I think 
especially now in Otaniemi, I've seen that there really is something for everyone. And um, there's so many different clubs, like I couldn't even name them all if I tried. Um, but whether you're interested in sports or arts or if you want to learn how to make cocktails or anything like that, there is like definitely something for everybody. Um, and like Mona said, there's, you know, something every week, like my phone is also telegram is going off all the time that, oh, buy tickets to this event. Um, so you can definitely keep yourself busy um, during the week as well by going to these events. And I think if you're a new student coming from abroad, I think it's a perfect way to meet new people and really get a sense of what the Finnish student culture specifically is like, because I truly believe there's nothing like it <laughs> in any other part of the world. It's, it's amazing. So yeah, it's the best part about studying in Finland. And I think, uh, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it's really true. Uh, Labiba, do you want to add something? Uh, yeah, I can add sort of like, or like some dish out some names since, uh, the people here are interested in business. So I can sort of mention the union that we have. So the business student union is called KY here at Alda. And it's comprised of three, but essentially four uh, sectors. Um, so I'm not going to name, name them all, but the one that I personally like attending the events of is called KY Sub because they specifically hold events um, for international students or exchange students, which I love because I love meeting new people from around the world. And then I believe Mikeli has its own KY sector as well. Um, and other than that, because like you have the KY Student Union, which has a ton of events that you can go to and buy tickets for. You also have your subject associations. So once you're actually studying, you know, in the school, your first point of contact will probably be your subject association. So for example, for me and Mona, it was all the economics. And that's where actually I met Mona. I love you. We met at a <laughs> economics party. It was like a welcome party of some sort. And um, what else? Other than that, most of uh, the clubs are sort of like not uh, degree related. So like Helmi mentioned, you can make a cocktail or two. You can, you know, go skiing, go golfing. There's a debate club, there's theater, choir, sports, whatever, you name it. But that's usually how it works. Yeah. 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 It's really whatever you like, you can join. So, yeah. Um, and also... No, my laptop's not working. No, yeah, student culture can take up a lot of your time if you want to, but uh, do you have any other interests that you do in your free time? And also if you would like to explain the pictures. So um, Labiba, would you like to continue? Uh, yeah, I can explain my picture down there. So that's me at my first um, slush event. Um, this was back in 2019, I believe. And yeah, just absolutely surreal experience. And I've already described it, so we don't have to go into it again. But yeah, essentially my free time, I I don't know. I feel like I'm not <laughs> much of a nature person. Um, so thank you, Helmi, for adding those pictures because I have none. Uh, so instead, what I like to do, or my main focus is meeting new people, because I don't know, for some reason, I really like doing that. And that means that I usually end up like volunteering for certain kinds of events, for example, this slush event, and I'm actually going this year as well. Um, or like all the, uh, specifically the business side has plenty of events you can volunteer for. For example, there are a bunch of hackathons, such as Dash and Junction, and different kinds of competitions. Um, just like a lot of volunteer work is what I like doing. Yeah, I don't know That's about cool. Theory. Yeah. Yeah, what about you, Helmi and Mona? Um, yeah, I definitely, like I promoted the student life so much, um, <laughs> but I definitely do like to make that part of my kind of free time. I do like to uh, uh, attend those different student events and meet new people as well, because 
there's so many people to meet all the time. So I think it's just great to make new connections everywhere. Um, but yeah, mostly I like to spend my time outdoors. I think Finland is just a beautiful country and there's so much you can do uh, no matter what time of year it is. Um, so the first picture you can see my dog in. Um, I love to spend time with him as well. Um, and that's taken during the summer, just hiking in a national park in Finland with my friends, which is just, it's great. And then the second picture is actually from um, a student organized trip that's all organized. Um, one of those skiing trips that was mentioned um, to, I think that is Levi, which is in um, northern part of Finland. So it's very cold, but it's beautiful as you can see in the pictures. So um, yeah, in the winter, I do like to spend time skiing and just outdoors in general. So I think Finland is the perfect place to enjoy nature. So I definitely try to take advantage of that. Yeah, what about you, Mona? Um, well, I feel like most of my free time goes to spending just evenings with my friends. I love to take a lot of walks like in, in, in the nature with people that live close to me and then inviting people over for wine and for wine and I don't know, maybe some pasta or I, I want to learn like, um, learn about new friends a lot. I love getting new perspectives on life. And also I feel like the, I don't know if the, this is too grown up but I feel like the restaurant scene in Helsinki is exquisite. So if you ever get a chance to go to a restaurant in Helsinki, there's so many different, exciting and fun restaurants out there. So so take a friend or two and, and visit because I really love doing that too. And, you know, I also work with my free time. I don't, I don't know if that's considered free time, but I also feel like my work friends are really fun. So then I also... I'm hosting events for them and I am also attending Slush this year. I'm going to be um, a volunteer for a team called Roundtables. I still don't know what it means, but I'll find out soon. <laughs> and I'm very excited. I, I've heard so much good about Slush and um, especially the after party, which is supposed to be very nice. So I love to party too. I don't know if that's uh, okay to say, but I do love doing that, you know, going out and having fun and dancing and stuff like that. Yeah, really nice to hear about your interests. Um, now we will talk a bit about the ALTO community because ALTO is home to a diverse and multidisciplinary community of students, staff, and also the faculty. So if you could just shortly tell us a bit like how you were welcomed when you started studying at Alta. Um, so Mona, would you like to continue? Um, well, I think for new students, the, the first week is reserved towards the orientation. And I think you get a get a big pamphlet of everything that's going on. So like every day for the for the whole week, you have something going on, whether it's learning about all the clubs or taking a tour on campus or getting to know your degree and all of your your new friends and um, getting to know all of the benefits that you're gonna have and like accommodation. So um, I feel like the welcome was very warm, even though. It was 2020 when me and Laviba started. Um, so half of the events were like the biggest events were canceled due to there being too many participants. But I feel like I was still very welcomed and I got a good sense of um, what the school is about and what the community is like. And it seemed very welcoming. Like there being so many people that get to just be who they are and them taking you in with open arms was very it wasn't surprising but um the degree to which it happened was a nice surprise nice to hear uh was it the same for you labiba and helmi go ahead <laughs> okay i can just quickly add so we can move on to the Mikeli perspective um yeah it, it was 2020 and I still managed to make friends so I think that says a lot 
Um, but yeah, I would say on top of everything else Mona has said, uh, I did like the tutor system. So you have a like a tutor and a small group of people from your class that you get to know and interact with the campus with. And at least I quite like the idea of having like, you know, someone above me showing me the ropes um, because I had no idea what was going on. And it's really, you know, disorienting to have to connect to university when you're behind a screen 24 seven. So I really appreciated that kind of support. But yeah, what about you, Helmi? Uh, yeah, I would say also very welcoming. So I think the first week as mentioned is was very nice. I think it's organized in Aldo especially like really well. Um, I started in 2019 in the fall. So um, mine was, everything was normal back then, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think just having those tutors like Babiba, Labiba mentioned, and then um, just kind of those older students around all the time to kind of show you um, just everything and you can always ask them questions and they're happy to help and especially in Mikkeli because it is such a small campus in the first week you literally get to know everybody so then everybody is super close after like a couple weeks of going to school um, and everyone's kind of in that same boat together everyone's like no one really was from Mikkeli so everyone moved to a brand new city and uh, no one really knew each other. Maybe a couple people were friends from high school or something, but everyone was kind of strangers to each other, which I think is great because then it kind of forces people to talk to new people as well. And they don't kind of get comfortable in their like previous friend group. Um, so yeah, I think the Alda community is great at welcoming anyone and everyone. Um, and you can definitely, you'll find your place and you'll find your group of people and yeah, I think it's it's a very good community to be a part of. Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, then what's your like picture? What is it like to be an international student in Finland? I see we have this picture of ranking here also. Um, yeah, who would like to say something? <laughs> Um, well, at least <clears throat> I can say, like I mentioned before, that I really like meeting people from all over the world. So I think Alba is a very, very good place to do that um, and to get all of these new perspectives and, you know, be exposed to these different cultures. Um, it's something that I'm quite addicted to. So it is quite nice to see the degree to which Alba is this international. It's honestly like you will see everyone and all kinds of people. Um, and every time you go to an event, it's like you pro like you'll see the same faces, but you'll like you will meet someone new and then you'll be able to hit that person up and have lunch with them. And it's just it's it's amazing. So, yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, what about Mona and Helmi? Do you want to add something or do you agree with Labiba? Uh, yeah, I think I agree. And. Um, considering these parties I feel like I've met people from all over the world and I've asked them sometimes because Finnish people can be very shy so I've, I've always wondered do they feel do they feel excluded or do they feel like Finnish people are weird and um, usually the response is uh, positive um, but after a little while it gets even more positive because Finnish people do like to include you, but they, they're quite reserved sometimes, so they might take a little warming up to to actually get them out of their shells. So if you come here and you feel like Finnish people are like they don't look you straight in the eye and they speak in short sentences, it's usually not because of you. It's because um, they're just um, Finnish. That's that's the way that they are. But usually when there's a party and then you actually start to mingle, they really open up. And then they feel like, oh, okay, it's it's not me. It's the person that they were shy. But um, yeah, just recently I got to know like this Mexican, Mexican girl called Paula from my finance class. And she told me that KY Sub has done a lot of good work in integrating all of the international students into the Finnish student life. So I feel like that's also something that um, gave me a lot of, I don't know, security and in that international students are taken care of, that they're not just like 
thrown into the wild and let fend for themselves, but they actually get like this support from a, from a club, which is really nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think there's lots of events also that international students can join if they want to. Um, so also a question that is related to this other question we had is, do you survive in Finland without speaking Finnish? Um, yeah, Helmi is saying yes. Uh, would you like to explain more? Um, yes, as a fully Finnish person, I don't even like to speak Finnish that much anymore. I have, or I don't even have to speak that much Finnish in my day-to-day -day life. Um, all of the courses are in English. Most of my friends, either they're international students um, or then they've gone to school in English for most of their lives like I have. So English has just become kind of our new mother tongue at this point. So um, uh, basically the only people I speak Finnish to anymore is my family. Um, and then obviously if I go to the grocery store or restaurant or whatever, um, but yeah, it's definitely possible because so many people in Finland have the skill um, of knowing English and because we learn it from such a young age. So that's definitely something no one should really worry about. And no one really has a hard time speaking English and no one is kind of weirded out by speaking English. So um, it's definitely possible. And it's because Finnish is such a hard language to learn. So I wouldn't even try. Um, but yeah, you can definitely survive with English, in my opinion. I don't know what the other girls have to say, but. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'd say that that um, it's not expected if somebody is an international student to, to learn Finnish and use Finnish. It's 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 not worth it. It, it, it. Like it's fun to take a course and learn some basics and learn the curse words, but you know, going to a store and like going to a restaurant and talking to talking to other students will be just way much easier in English. And uh, I feel like it's just the older population in Finland that maybe doesn't know English. But I, I would gladly say that most of the young people that are going to be attending university with you, they're they're going to know English uh, very well. So you can definitely survive with just English. Yeah. Yeah, I also agree. Absolutely. Um, yes, so that was all the questions I had prepared for you now. Um, now we will have a little Q&A for these 10 minutes that we have left. So if you have any questions, you can just write them in the chat and we will try to answer. Um, but yeah, the first question we have got is, is it possible to do the bachelor's program in Finnish in Otaniemi and then transfer to the English for the master's? So does any of you know? Uh, yeah, that's quite common. Uh, if you start off in the, what's called the Gauk Baselinia, so the, the basic business uh, degree in Finnish, um, and it's a bachelor's program. You start off with that, you major in something in your second year, um, and then you continue on to your master's. And most of these masters are in English, except I think, was it like business law is mostly held in Finnish. So that is very common, yeah. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's really good information. Um, and then next question, uh, is it harder to find a job if you don't know Finnish? So I don't know if you have experience in this or if you know someone or. Uh, it definitely, I would say in the field of business, it is definitely, um, it can be a limiting factor. But I would say, like, throughout the recent years, a lot more um, career opportunities have been sort of opened up for English speakers. Um, and that's like, you know, developing as we speak. So it, it can be a limiting factor. But I think if you just, you know, work your way around it, um, 
it's very much possible to, you know, find a job and be successful at it. And I know many people that have done so without knowing Finnish. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it also kind of depends on the firm that is in question. So obviously firms that are more global, they're more, um, they even want, you know, a more international candidate because that fits better their, you know, company image and strategy. Um, but yeah, like Labiba said, it's definitely still maybe an issue in Finland in working life that if you don't know Finnish, certain roles can, you know, be a bit limited for you. Um, but I also think it's developing and what I've seen on LinkedIn, the different job posts, a lot of them have that, oh, finish is not required, which I think is great. Um, but yeah, I think there's still work to be done, but I think um, it's moving in the right direction and there are definitely roles you can find that you don't need to know finish for. So you just gotta kind of know where to look and keep your eye out for those. So, yeah. 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 Uh, do you want to add something more on our? Do you agree? Um, I I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that was the question we had got in the chat. So I don't think we have any more questions for now. Um, but yeah, now when you have listened to this webinar, I hope you have got more inspired to apply to Alta and if you wish to do so the application period is from the 4th to the 18th of January so yes and also if you have questions more specifically about applying to Alta uh, you can join a webinar on Thursday that is hosted by the Alta admission services and also if you can't attend on Thursday you can send an email to admissions um, at alto.fi and they will help you. Um, yeah, and also if you have any uh, more general questions, what it is to study at Alto, then um, us ambassadors are happy to help you. So for example, you can send us a message on Unibody or then uh, every Friday we have a coffee with squad session so there you can join or then uh, you can just go to our website alto.fi slash studies to see some news or upcoming events or just search for some links so yes but thank you very much to our panelists for your interesting answers and also big thanks to everyone joining us today and we hope to see you on campus next year Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys.